Okay, then listen. Right, I'm gonna. I've found some things that I think will interest you, and I want your first thoughts on these. Okay. Now these are facts that I've sourced. Mm. Okay. What's the What's the actual topic? Well, you love animals, don't you? You're interested in animal well, some facts. Of them. I don't. Mm. I don't love them. They, they, some of them fascinate me and stuff, but a lot of them also get on my nerves. I don't know how an animal can get on your nerves. They just. They just do. Okay, then here you go. Right. Um, there's a frog, Carl. Just a little frog, a poison arrow frog that contains enough poison to kill over a thousand human beings. Why is it that annoyed? It's not annoyed. Well, why is it going about killing a thousand people? No, it has the potential to. It has enough poison, it has enough toxin in it that could kill a thousand human beings. But does it, it, does it need that? Whereabouts is this? Where's it living? Rainforest, I think. And does it need that sort of power? Is it in that much? Is it, is, uh, is it getting threatened a lot? Is what I mean. Well, no, because it's saying, "Don't come near me," and it shows it with its colours. It's got the colours that say it doesn't want to be eaten. It doesn't want people to chew a bit, right? And go, "Oh, I'm an idiot." It's saying, "Look at my colours. Don't eat me. Don't you don't want to come near me." But then why give it bright colours? Because now it's standing out. Yeah, and it's going, don't eat me. Yeah, but make it a colour that fits in, like camouflage. Why why make it orange? Of course it's going to stand out, and then they'll attack it, and then it'll turn around and bite and kill a thousand men or whatever. No, it doesn't bite. It's the fact that if you were to eat it, you would die. Yeah, but who's... I mean, who's going to eat it? Well, things that eat frogs. The French. <laughs> <laughs> and they yeah. go, Sacre bleu! <laughs> you have killed me... And 999 <laughs> of my friends. But why, why is everything, like, surviving like this, though? I thought it was all about survival of the fittest, not yeah. the one who looks the hardest. Well, but survival of the fittest is whether you're chosen or not by nature. No, but I I'd survive if I could go about killing a thousand men at one bite. It's not fair. It doesn't bite. It's well, whatever, if it licks you or whatever. But no, it okay, not if it licks you, if you lick it. Well, I'm not going to lick it. It's not, it's not going to happen. <laughs> I, don't, I will not be licking a frog. So it's, it's of no danger to me. So I could still kill it, and there's no chance, at no point, am I going to lick a, a little frog's head. Not when it's alive or when it's dead. <laughs> I love the fact it's all about you. It's all about how it relates to you. And he's annoyed that they're, like, they're getting away with something. He doesn't, he doesn't like any sly animals. He doesn't like animals hiding. He, don't, he, then he, wants, no, he doesn't want animals um, killing things. Then he wants them to kill things. He doesn't know what he wants. When they say survival of the fittest, they don't mean that, say, lions have been working out in a gym. It means, the fittest, it means the fittest gene pool. And the fittest gene pool is a gene pool that's still around. That's all it is. You think that everything, slugs... Cats are all somehow in their their ambition is to be like us or to, to have the but, attributes but, like us that they can speak, they can talk, they can think, only, they can act. I only think that because when you see people with these pets, lizards, cats, whatever, they treat them like the humans. So I think if you do that enough times, they're going to start getting familiar with Again, certain Planet of the Apes. No, yeah. he's I'm thinking talking, of Planet say like of the Apes. You, say like you with your cat, the way you talk to it, you give it a little cheeky massage and that when it's stressed out. And no, 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 you made that up that it's it was stressed cat. out. It's I'm just playing with my cat, right? If anything, the, the, the cat is to de-stress me. So you're talking to your cat, Rick. Is it answering back much? How are the conversations going with your cat? Well, it's, I have more intelligent conversations <laughs> with my cat than I do with yeah, him. Yeah, here's one, right? Me, we, when my gran died, right, um, she, she had this rubbish dog, right? And that's all we got left. Um, it's called Fluffy. And, like, my gran looked after it in a way that... It was treated like a human. Do you know what I mean? Had a little coat on when it went out and all that. Um, anyway, so she died. We get left it. My dad's like, oh, bloody hell, right? Uh, before you know it, it was a wreck. Because we, we weren't sort of bathing it the way she bathed it. We let it out. We wanted to go out. It got covered in oil. It used to go under the car and everything. So it's, it went from looking like this fluffy, you know, poodle to just being a bit of a wreck. It got hit by a car, it ran sideways like a crab and all that. <laughs> In the now, course of how long? A month? Probably about two, two months or something. Yeah. Now, so it went from being over-treated to just being treated like a dog. Yeah, but a dog dog isn't, uh, you know, is not a, a indigenous species anywhere. We sort of bred those from, you yeah, know, jackals or, or and wolves. Yeah, change it, all I'm saying is change it, take away the dog thing. 
I mean, that lizard thing you've got. Salamander. It's it's still sort of treated as part of the family, even though well, it it's not. As, I mean, how is it treated as part of the family? Just the way, you know, it's looked after that big area that it's got to itself. We, we stick it in a case and feed it a cricket now uh, and again. It, how is that like one of the family? It doesn't matter because it's in your flat. It is in Carl's family. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's in your flat, in it, and it's sat in that corner. I just mean, as time goes on, yeah. Things, things get educated as they get older. How old's that lizard? You don't. How old is it? About 15 years old. Right. Now, it knows more now than it did when you got it because it's been in those surroundings. It's had its eye on things. It's no. 15, so presumably it listens to a lot of Linkin Park. <laughs> it goes on the internet a lot. <laughs> no, but do, do, do you know what I mean? You've already proved your point. It's like that fella who kept hitting the dog on the head with a stick. Right, I Pavlov, at no point did he hit a dog on the head with a stick. But he kept doing it, and eventually the dog went, I'm sick of this, and wandered <laughs> off, didn't <laughs> it? Pavlov yeah. there. Brilliant. Do you know what I'd like to do? A programme where you rewrite, you paraphrase someone's theory. So Pavlov's first. We could do uh, um, Freud. Give us, you know, what do you know about Sigmund Freud? The father of psychoanalysis. Right, come on in. I don't know anything on him. Here's an interesting fact. If the, the frog annoyed you, this might annoy you. A blind chameleon will still change colour to match its surroundings. You're aware that the chameleon can... Yeah, whatever it, whatever it sits on. Yeah. But then what, what happens when you put one of them on a mirror? <laughs> <laughs> no, do, does it get stressed out or what? What's, what's it copying? <laughs> well, it probably doesn't need to copy anything because it looks at itself and it goes, oh, look, looks like that. It's brilliant. God, that was fast. That's the fastest I've ever done that. That is brilliant. So they, they can go any colour, there's nothing, you can put them on anything and they'll go to the thing. I, I, I don't want you to have a chameleon because you'd just be trying to see what it could and couldn't Try and do. Try catch it out. I know, yeah. Pop it on some tartan. Mm. Yeah. But again, say like, say like the frog thing, right? Pop it on the telly. Yeah. <laughs> couldn't do it fast enough. <laughs> Why does the chameleon need that skill of copying a colour? Because at the end of the day, that's, that's mainly sticking in, in the woods, isn't it? By trees, by grass. Right. Why can't it just stay green? That's all it needs. It, that those colour changes are only for camouflage, aren't they? I don't know. Some of them are for attraction. Some of them to show moods, anger. No, but I, th I just think we're encouraging them. You see, maybe this is evolution or whatever. But at the end of the day, because they can change colour, they're wandering out of their area. They can be wandering about, you know, through a car park and everything, just because they'll go, well, I don't want to get seen. Change the colour of co concrete. Whereas, or into the colour of a Fiat Punto. But they should just stay green. Stay green, right? Stay in the woods and stay safe. <laughs> I love this public information <laughs> for chameleons. Words of advice for chameleons. <laughs> oh, God. Stay green, stay in the woods, <laughs> oh. stay safe. Good night. Oh, God. Um, right. <laughs> uh, the only time a turkey whistles is when it panics. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas time, then. Yeah. What do you think of that, Carl? It goes from one extreme to another, doesn't it? You've got a frog who's going mental. It's not going mental. Killing thousands of people. No, that's not. That's got that sort of power. Then you've got a turkey who's whistling for help. <laughs> <laughs> you think that you should redress the balance a little bit? You want to give... What would you do? Give the frog the ability to kill 500 and the turkey 500? Um, I don't think it should be killing... Uh, I reckon 10. 10, because... You've made your point with 10, haven't you? Do you well, think that he's got 1,000 in his lifetime, like he's got 1,000 to kill? I don't think you understand. I just think he doesn't really kill a thousand people. It doesn't mean someone goes, Frog, you have the power to kill one thousand people in your lifetime. Choose them wisely. But I just think if it needs that sort of power, power. it should be fighting evil. Well, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's knocking about the wrong area, isn't it? If it's under that much danger, move. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking the other day about, um, you know, your body and everything, because it is amazing, isn't it, how it works. Oh, yeah, yeah. Does the brain control you, or are you controlling the brain? I don't know <laughs> if I'm in charge of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Nor do I, There's Carl. a surprise. Nor do I, Carl. No, do, do you know what I mean, though, by that? Does well, the brain control you, or do well, you when control you, when, the brain? Like, don't you ever sort of think sometimes? Say if you're making... But you I, are I was the making, brain. No, no, but I was making a shopping list, right? Going, right, I need some uh, rice, uh, kidney beans. Uh, and I thought I had everything, and I sort of was rolling up the paper, and then, then something went, oh, an onion. 
Your so brain did Something that. went an onion. Was yeah. it Suzanne? No, well, my brain, my brain sort of went, you forgot something. Yeah. I, I didn't think I'd forgot. I was no, no, you that. are your brain. No, no, <laughs> but don't you understand? The brain, my brain was in, I was in control of my brain <laughs> when I was writing down rice and kidney beans. But you're not in charge of the onion. That's another part of the brain that's in charge of the onion. The onion, the onion sector. Yeah. No, but I put the paper away. Putting my coat on, ready to go, ready but to go and get the well, rice. Yes, but, yes, but your onion lobe kicked in. <laughs> what? So you, you put the paper in your pocket, you got the coat on, then you just suddenly hear. Then from it nowhere, was just like it was onion. Like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not even thinking about that shopping list. It's in my pocket. I'm thinking, do I need my gloves? It's cold out. Yeah. And suddenly, onion. And it was like, oh yeah, onion. Yeah, I had to get the paper out. So what I'm saying is, it was, in, the, it was in charge. The brain, the brain, the mind, the brain is the... What are you doing? But Who's in charge? That's just, you forgot, you forgot the onion and then you remembered the onion. You must have forgotten things in the past. No, but not, not like that, not where... Like, it just made me think, that was weird, who, who reminded me of that? You did. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not... <laughs> no, you are your brain. It's not like there's you, then there's a brain, then there's an extra one looking down at it, about, oh, the, the, you know, the, the, the meta brain, the thing above it. No, but your brain... Your... <sighs> How does your brain work? <laughs> you give it information, don't you? Well, it takes. Do you mean you give it information? Well, it's if doing I, it, if isn't I it? sat in a room with nothing, not feeding it anything, it wouldn't know anything. No, but it, it, it's this thing but that there's two yous. It's this thing that there's there's, there's Carl this... and Carl's brain. Yeah, there's there's not there's not a duality in this. If you, if if you go if you go, come on, come on, now think. That's the brain saying that to itself. It's it, it's not. There's not two people in there having an argument. Coming, come on, brain, and the brain's going. Oh, don't you start? I was thinking then. And the other thing's going. Brain, onion, and the brain goes. Carl, onion. You are your brain. If you are anything, you are you are your mind, your brain, your collection of memories, your personality. You're not what you look like. Does that answer your question, Carl? Uh, what do you think of then? You were thinking of a tortoise on a skateboard then when I said that last <laughs> sentence, weren't you? <laughs> you know, whilst you've been working on that, I've been travelling about a bit. Mm. Went to um, Dorset, right? A uh, nice beach there. Uh, and you know those huts you get? Like a hut on the beach and you... Oh, where you get changed? You can get changed in it, but they, they're better than that. It's like you can put a telly in it. Uh, sofa, if you want. Oh, you don't mean the Victorian changing yeah, huts? Yeah, you mean those like sort of things? It, it's sort of bigger than that. Yeah. And um, we're walking down there, and there was a really sort of big fat family in one of them. There was about four of them, and you could tell that they'd never had a game of anything. Do you know what I mean? They yeah. just sit down there, eating ice creams, looking at the sea, and what have you. And the weird thing is, the little fat kid, the youngest one, who must have been, I don't know, about eight, he was really fat to the point of you couldn't see his neck. Yeah. And he sat he sat at the front of his mum and dad and his older sister. He sat there and he had a frisbee and I thought, look, they, they don't want to play with him. I mean, that's that's an active game to play, isn't it? Yeah. A frisbee. As we got closer, he was just using it to eat Maltesers out of. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought even, again, you know, the one active thing he's got is using it to eat out of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Extraordinary. And that just sums up what people are like you know, when it comes to... Keeping oh. fit and activities. Oh, that's fantastic. One thing I've, I've noticed, because I occasionally go to the gym, and you know those guys who work out constantly to give themselves extraordinary physiques? Just, they, you know, they're on the trip, they're on the weights, and they're really... You know, I notice in the summer, particularly, those guys cannot wait to get their shirts off. Yeah. Everywhere you see, they're walking around. If they've got a good, good torso, they are walking shirts off. Even, I think, if you go to nightclubs, I notice there's always one guy who's thinking, well, I have put so much work into this body, I have got to get my shirt off on the dance floor. A vest, yeah. You know, and it comes straight a, off. A brand new tattoo. I'm not covering that up. Exactly. I've paid a lot for it. Let's see it. Yeah, yeah. But that's what we were saying about bodies. I can't remember why we were talking about it. We've got to a point in science now that you can change a head. Right. No, well, that, that doesn't make any sense at all. It, it was a programme, uh, and it was done in the 50s or 60s where they stuck a, a monkey's brain on a stick and had it wired up and it still worked, right? Right, OK. And that was in, like, the 60s or Right, whatever. OK. Well, so, to, well to, to say the change a head makes no sense at all, because just, if you put a, a, a different head on a different body, you're changing the body. Yeah, I know. Well, that's what I'm about to say to you, though. What? That's what I'm saying. That I'd be more confident if... I had someone else's body, because if anyone dissed it, I can go, oh, no, it's bad, isn't it? But it's what not are you mine. talking about? What well, it's, it's like, say... Um, As opposed to someone else's head? Yeah. 
Well, well it wouldn't be me, would it? The head is me. Well, of course it is. That's yeah. what I mean. Yeah, so what do you mean? Me. You'd be happier having someone else's body. What, than your own? What I mean is, say if um, you're wandering about, uh, for, some, for some reason there's an incident. You have to take your top off and that, and everyone's looking at you, right? And you're a bit sort of, you know, you haven't got the muscles and that, you haven't got the six-pack. All right. Uh, which isn't that nice anyway. I don't know why that's become a nice thing, really, seeing the insides of you. You might as well. <laughs> I mean, I know not. I came up with the see-through skin idea, but it's it's a bit weird, isn't it? You can see stuff. No, no, it's the muscle in front of the... No, it's not. Sometimes it is. It's, see, not the, like, it's not the tubes. outline of your no, organs. No, you can't see tubes. You can see tubes and veins and stuff. Well, you can see veins. Yeah, well, I don't want to see that. That's why we've got skin over it. Well, stop I mean. looking at naked men, then. Well, no, you but sometimes you can't help it because it's been hot, and it's, like you say, there's people walking around with vests on and that. So anyway, what I'm saying is, say if some incident happened, I'm walking about with my top off. Right. Girls are laughing at me, right? Why? <laughs> Don't know, they might. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. So, they wouldn't look at your body, they'd all look at your head. So so what I mean is, yeah. rewind that, right, and imagine all that happens again, but I've I've got someone else's body. Right. Whose right? body? Uh, just some fella who's died and I, and my body was injured and they said, we've got a new body in. You right. can have it. We'll yeah. stick your head on it. Yes. Yeah. Now, say if... They're if, laughing at you. Uh, they're, they're laughing, laughing at the body. They're laughing yeah. at the body. Yeah. But at least I'd be able to sort of go, I know it's a mess, but it's not mine. At least I don't have to claim ownership. So so all of this extraordinary technology that can make a head, put one head on another person's body so you can go, yeah, it's not my body. Oh, no. But, and but it's not your own. I'm not being funny, though. So if you have a body transplant, right, and you're there, you're at home, yeah. naked, you look down, yeah. lovely penis and a set of testicles. Yeah. Right? What do you do with them? What do you mean? What am I doing with them? Well, do you like them? Well, you wouldn't, you wouldn't mess about with them as much as if they were your own. <laughs> If you did mess about with them, would you feel guilty that you were messing about with another man's testicles and penis? And it's the full body? Yeah. No, cos th they're not my hands, either. <laughs> <laughs> you're a genius! You're a fucking genius! So what you're doing is watching someone else wank. Yeah. <laughs> Pants, he's gone and written it down again. <laughs> <laughs> That's the uh, the ever changing jingle for Carl's diary, excerpts of which we like to read each week. Walk through Covent Garden. There were five of them mimes knocking about. I don't understand why people take pictures of mimes. Everyone looks like a mime in a picture. <laughs> That's so true. That's really true. If the point is they're staying still, if that's their skill. A picture won't tell that story. That's that's absolutely true. <laughs> my dad took the cat to be put down today because it kept bumping into things since losing its sight. My mum said she's not going to get another one. She said the parrot is looking worried as it's seen the budgie and the cat go in the space of three months. <laughs> Your mum said the parrot's looking worried. What's the what what, what happened to the cat then? It, it it gets into a lot of fights. It lost one eye. And uh, then it got into another fight and lost another. Oh, and it no. was just walking around, bumping into stuff. The, I mean, the vet sort of said, oh, we can do stuff to keep it alive and all that, but it's a bit out of order, isn't it? Because it costs a fortune, they shouldn't tell you. But... Mum and Dad can't afford to have eyes put on it and stuff. No, you can't put, have eyes put on a cat anyway. No, but they said, oh, we, we can do something here. We can have, have its eyes sorted out. But it... W I don't think you should be allowed cats. Why? Not the Pilkington family. Why not? Well, they they have good dying. lives. Yeah, I know, but they have good lives whilst they're still knocking about. It's just that we get through them. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good job you're not going to have kids. Oh, God almighty. I can't believe it. A mate sent me a story on email about a bloke in China who has this weird illness that means he can't have his picture taken. 
That's not the that's not the weird bit. If he tries, his body doesn't appear in the photo. Don't talk shit. He has had group pictures taken and everyone appeared apart from him. Don't talk shit. The that's story bollocks. had a picture next to it of a family photo and it said he was stood at the back, but you couldn't see him. Right. He wasn't in the picture. He was in the picture. No, he wasn't in the picture. He's done loads of tests and stuff. No, there's don't, I haven't done loads of tests. This is bollocks. There's no way this is scientifically possible. What's what? his want? Yeah, now he's wanted. Just a white bit of paper up on the police wall. Have you seen this man? What man? If you see him, tell us. <laughs> You're talking shit. Suzanne watched the film You've Got Mail tonight for about the 14th time. I don't think you could properly fancy someone without seeing them, unless you're blind. I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's odd when blind people have affairs. Why is that odd? Just because most stuff is, is based on looks, isn't it? So you think once they've found someone, they're happy with them. Stick with them. But no, it's not true. I mean, most things are based on looks. What I mean is when you first first like meet someone and that... Well, and initially, it's only looks, because yeah. you don't know them. So that's what I'm saying. But that's, so a, that, that's a ridiculous thing to say, isn't it? Well, no, it's just what I think. I'm not saying that that's like, facts or anything. I'm just thinking, if you're blind, why mess about? You're still basing on it if it's only looks that yeah. you, people find... What? Yeah, I'm just saying, so why is a blind person messing about having an affair? Because I'm saying that... Presumably that blind person isn't basing anything on looks. I, I just... All right, I mean, maybe that's not... Uh, I mean more like... Do you want me to cross it out? Shall I cross it out? Well, it's, 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 <laughs> it's just the same way, I think I put how, you know, people... Uh, I read something in a Sunday paper once with some bloke who was going out with some woman. Uh, he ended up going out with a sister who was a twin. If you're going to have a change, have a change. Spoke to Ricky about trips to the moon. Oh. He was up for going just to see what the world looks like. I came up with the idea of a giant mirror on the moon that would reflect the world back. He had a few questions, but <laughs> but I had the answers. Yeah. He changed the subject. I won. Right. My first question was, how would you get it up there? He said, bit by bit. <laughs> That'd be a good mirror then, wouldn't it? <laughs> I said, how big would it be? He went, you'd still need a telescope. I said, how would you get it on the right side of the moon, always facing the right? He went... He went, does the moon move then? I went, yes. And if we don't like the mirror on the moon, we can always wallpaper over it. <laughs> <laughs> it's Suzanne's birthday tomorrow, so I've got to get her something. I sometimes think it would be best if we didn't celebrate birthdays. I think people would live a bit longer if they didn't know how old they were. Age puts restrictions on things. She said something about wanting one of them posh badges to put on her coat. I will look for one later. I love the fact that... Around the time that you've got to buy Suzanne her birthday present, you think that birthday presents are a bad idea. Got up early, it's Suzanne's birthday, gave her the card, a present. She was well happy with her posh badge. She wore it to work. It's quite nice, quite nice to hear a moment where she was actually happy for once in your company. They always say when you get someone a present, you should buy them something they wouldn't buy themselves. Daft rule. I want something I would buy myself if I had the money. When I was young, me auntie Nora got me a present I wouldn't buy myself. It was a T-shirt with her face on.